We are live, and this is Art Joy of Sharing with Peg Robinson and Chelsea. And today is all about alcohol ink. I hope you're uh, ready to put on. Huh? I've lost your sound. Oh, no, you're back now. If you asked me a question or told me to say hi, I didn't hear you. But hi, hey, everyone. <laughs> I asked you how you were doing. Let me see. Oh, we dear. already have Barbara and Vicki here. And you and I. That's it. Four of us. Let's see if they can hear me. <laughs> and Pat and Sybil. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. We're just trying to get get situated and organized and ready to go here. At least I, that's what I'm doing. I did start early, but and made this lovely mess on my desk, but um, and my fingers, although not too bad yet. Can everyone hear Peg when she's talking? Hello, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Hi, Marie. Misdiagnosed is Peg. There's a little bit of a delay. Anyway, so um, for me today, I've cut some papers to basically the size of card fronts, and I'm just going to work on those. This is glossy cardstock, and this is UPO paper. UPO paper is really great with alcohol inks. It is a kind of like, it feels like plastic. So they say it's, say paper. It says right on there, UPO well, I don't know if it says paper, but anyway, it says UPO, but it's great for, um, it's a non-porous surface that's great for watercolor as well as alcohol inks. Alcohol inks come in a lot of different uh, brands, and I just got this new set um, in preparation for today as well as a few other new ones, but this one was inexpensive on Amazon. It might have been on sale. It was $21 for all these. And it comes with a black and white, which I thought was pretty unique, and a gold. So I don't know if it's still that price, but if you're just getting started with alcohol ink, that might be a good choice. And then, of course, there's Ranger. Ranger makes a lot of them. And then you can also use, uh, if you have Copic markers and, and you have those various refills, they're called, for the Copic markers, those are also an alcohol ink you can use. Marie says she can hear you too, um, Peg. Hi, Edwidge. Good, good. Uh, you know, it might have just been a momentary glitch when we switched over. Who knows? <laughs> Nobody knows. Only, no. only the YouTube um, gremlins know. Well, and I'm just, I'm just trying to get it so that I can read the chat while I'm doing this. So I can read the chat. The joys of YouTube, right? Barbara says that the gold and silver in the pinatas are gorgeous. I haven't actually, as you can see, I haven't even got them out of the package yet. They are, they are. Um, and I'm sorry, I missed what you were telling them about um, the alcohol. Do you only do you have the Adirondack alcohol inks? Is that what you? Yes, I have. I have the um, Tim Holtz and the Adirondack Rangers. Um, I have these new pinatas, but I don't have any of the various um, Copic ink refills that you could use as well. But I was talking about being able to use that as well. Okay, and yes, I mean this is what this is what the Copic inner like this, and yes, they work just as well as anything. Um, remember that you also have alcohol in the pinata is like this. The other thing that they have for uh, blending is they have a different blending solution for the pinatas. They also have a cleanup solution that works pretty well. Um, something else you might want to consider having around is a can of air. 
because it blows it around for you. Um, I forgot to grab that. An extra bottle of alcohol. So, and I like these little tops where you can just sprinkle it out. Um, and then uh, one of one of the references, I, I was looking for another reference I have. Um, there's one from a gal, from, and I'll try to put it in the links later. Um, there's one from a gal who does stencils for Stencil Girl, and she has a real good book. And I couldn't lay my hands on that book this morning, but I'll try to find the link for that and get it up there for you too. But this is uh, Dreamscaping from June Rollins, and she is one of the well-known artists for um, doing alcohol ink. And I have played with some of those techniques uh, doing the dreamscaping and created, you know, images like this in alcohol ink. So, you know, it's a, it's a fun thing to do if you like doing landscapes and that sort of thing. June Rollins is the expert in that. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to play with a couple of things today. Um, I can show you some things for products. Um, some of the things that I like to use is the Kamar varnish for finishing. Um, another good one for finishing is the Triple Thick uh, from Deco Art. And the thing to remember is to always spray lightly from a medium distance it will move. If you look at a tile like this, you can see that uh, when you're spraying, sometimes you might end up moving some of this because of the nature of the alcohol ink. You want something that is not going to move that around. So that's why I say if you do this, do the first few coats lightly, spray it, back away, uh, let it sit for an hour, come back and put another coat on and do that quite a few times until you get your layers built up. Peg, they're talking about us having problems. Um, Ela and Caged Fish and Laura have come in and they say that we are having trouble. So what, can you hear me? Can you hear Shell? Can you hear Peg? Can you hear nothing? Hi, Cindy. Is anybody going to answer my question? Maybe they cannot hear me. I don't know. Can you guys hear Shell? Um, she is. Cindy hears me. Okay. Can you can you hear me, folks? Um, we're. Barbara says she hears both of us. Hila says we sound good. And Pat says that they can hear Shell, but not Peg. Um, Ashley says that she can hear us both. Edwidge says they can hear us both. So does Sybil. And Lori. So I'm not sure what's going on. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to try out my pinata inks that I just got. And this is some glossy cardstock. And the way back in the day, way, way, way back when I first got that Arandac alcohol inks, I had like maybe six colors. Um, it, it was applied with this block with some uh, Velcro-y stuff on there that you can put felt pads on. That was way back in the day. So I'm going to try that to start out with. And I'm going to try Calabaza Orange. Calabaza. And... Passion Purple. Marilyn also says she can hear both of us. Letty says they can. she can hear both of us. We have a good crowd here today with some new people. Well, Thank you I'm all for coming. About that. I'm just really frustrated. I go in and I look at my setting and it all looks good, so I'm not sure what the problem is. Well, this one has a little shaky ball inside. This is the gold. So I'm gonna Are you hearing me okay, Shell? Yeah, I can hear you now. Earlier, you were fading in and out, you know, like it sometimes does. Hmm. So I'm not sure what the deal is. So I've got those three colors on my pad. 
And I'm just going to pounce them onto my glossy cardstock to see what happens. Because I have never tried these um, jacquard pinata inks before. They seem pretty darn vibrant. They smell different than the other ones. They Thank smell you, Cindy. More I'm Pat saying it's okay. Cindy's saying it's okay. Belinda's saying good morning. Good morning, Marie. Good morning, Sybil. Good morning, Edwidge. Um, you know, Barb, everybody, Isla, uh, mm, Laura, <laughs> I'm trying to see, Cage Fish drop in. Um, well, that's pretty cool. Marie. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of people. Um, I think I've named most of them. Yeah, Vicky's here. I'm trying to scroll through here. Lori Richard, um, picking up people, picking up people as we go. Okay. All right. So, so what, are you, what is your plan? Let's see what you're going to do on your you desk. Know, I don't. I don't really have a plan. I I brought out some tiles and some different types of paper. Let's number one talk about different types of paper that you can use. King four is a coated paper. Um, I started, this is just a piece of coated paper in black. And for this one, I started out with the white, uh, because you're working on something dark and the alcohol ink is translucent, you need to put a layer down to put your color onto if you're working on a dark color. But any any of your dark color on with alcohol ink. It's just that you need to put a layer down first. Then uh, the next thing I have out here, uh, Shell suggested this morning, if you have, you know, these um, uh, Tybeck envelopes, uh, they're fun because they are a plasticized envelope. These are just used ones that you can cut, that I've saved and cut up. And it has fibers running through it. So, I mean, this is a fun surface to work on. And you're recycling, which is a good thing. Um, you can also work on metals. Um, that's one of the fun things about it. This happens to be just a piece of cardstock that I put um, a layer of adhesive between and some, um, what is it, stick it? from Ken Oliver and I and then I put the real cheap um, aluminum foil on top of this <laughs> and ran it through the embosser so now I've got a texturized metal that I can apply alcohol ink to and you know you just you just run and you can also get foil like this is double-sided with color on it already and then you can add your own colors to the top here's another color of another couple of colors of uh, coated paper and i apologize we had a gas leak here yesterday so my brain is not functioning on all cylinders <laughs> i probably still have a little gas overflow um, the other thing that is recommended is a coated paper and this is a matte coat paper this one happens to be from Ranger Ink, and it's called Specialty Stamping Paper, but it's a matte coat paper. I also have the same sort of thing from Marco. Uh, if you want to order it in bulk, you can go to a you know, paper supplier and just get a ream or whatever you want if you need a coated paper. Just tell them what you're looking for, and they'll give it to you. And then I also have Judicans, which is a chrome coat, which is a gloss finish. Um, but that's what I'm saying is all of these papers that have a glossy finish will work with your alcohol ink because it's not porous. And that's what you want is something that's non-porous. Um, here are some dominoes that I worked on. It's a non-porous surface and that's the best thing for alcohol ink. So what are you doing now, Shell? Well, I um, you were talking about the black coated paper, and so I got out some black coated paper, and I dripped on some of this white first, and then I just took that same 
those same colors that I was using, the same little pad. Break it up for me now, Shell. I'm breaking up? Yeah. <sighs> I'm so tired of YouTube. Oh, my gosh. It might just be you, though, and not not um, them. That's happened before. So the same pad with the purple and the terracotta or the orange colors on it, and I'm going over this white and just patting and stamping onto there, and it's giving an interesting effect. So I don't know if you can see, but this is a black coated paper. And then I have some alcohol, a 91%, and I'm going to spray some of that and see what happens. Because I'm curious. So interestingly, these don't look that dissimilar, but one's black paper and one's white paper. <laughs> the pattern's different, but the colors are not so different. Letty says that my sound is okay. So does Sybil. Huh. I think we're okay, Peg. Let's just keep going. It's just different people getting different results. I think Peg has disappeared again. So that was interesting. So let's try. I have another coated paper here. This is a mirror paper. It has gold color on it, and I'm just curious what happens with that. So I'm going to change my little uh, pad here. The pinata seems a little bit sticky. Does anybody else think that's true? A little bit sticky. I've got rainforest green and Baja blue. So this is the oldest technique in the book, in case you were wondering. I think I'm going to add a little bit of this gold additive in this too. Just because I'm using it on gold paper, which I'm getting all over my fingers. Peg was smart enough to get out some, uh, some gloves to wear, like a smart person. This time I'm just twisting, twisting. Well, I just, I just know that it takes a long time to get that stuff off your head. True story. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, that turned out pretty cool. cool. You know, these these gloves are, um, you know, you get like a hundred in a box, and I get them at. Uh, But most places, uh, most of your hardware stores have these industrial gloves. And um, they're made out of, what is it, nitrile? Which, nitrile, yeah, uh, like you know, that. some people have allergies to latex, so you probably don't want to use latex if you have allergies. But, you know, these don't seem to create problems for people. So that would be my recommendation. That one reminds me of the ocean. I like that. So, so what I'm going to end up with is just a bunch of card fronts that I can then collage or layer over. That's just my plan. I'm not going to like try to make something specific. I just okay. want to play today. It's a play day, folks. It's a play day. <laughs> and sometimes Hi, those... Holly. Holly showed up. Nikki showed up. Hi, Nikki. Cindy. So I found the culprit. What my is husband, it? My husband forgot that I was streaming. <laughs> so I guess it was on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm hoping that it's getting better now. Paper is that? I think they're asking you, Shell. Oh, Barbara. Um, if you roll back, this one was coated glossy paper, which is just this white. No, that's Yupo, sorry. This white shiny paper. Then I did black 
glossy paper next, which is this one. That's dusty, but you get the idea. And then this last one that I did was the gold glossy paper. Okay. And then now I'm doing the same color, still the same as I did on the gold, still the same technique, only over the white glossy paper. And you get a really interesting bright color. I'm not some of the, the gold's not coming through. I did put a little bit of that gold uh, mixative stuff on there. Mm -hmm. Not getting much of that. Oh, there's a little bit. So, same technique, same colors on gold glossy paper and white glossy paper. So, in a bit, I'm going to use Yupo paper, but I was just going to start out with the really old stuff that I've had for I don't even know how long. <laughs> I've had these papers. I've had these glossy papers forever. Yeah. 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 So they're saying they're getting a little bit of echo from you, Shell. That's because I'm using the microphone on my camera instead of a headset. That's the reason. Oh. So if I walk away, it will you'll hear me fade away if I go to cut some paper or something and then come back. These two I did earlier. So anyway, let's find out what Peg's gonna do now. Well, right now I'm just playing with my dominoes. I had them out here, so I figured I would. Um, I'm just down. And then and I'm going to pick another color in the same family. And this one happens to be pen, uh, patina. Excuse me. <laughs> pinata in the brain. And I'm going to use a little bit of the blending solution. And you don't have to have these blocks. I've done this with just some Velcro on a piece of wood from the garage or, you know, piece of plastic, whatever. You, you don't have to invest a lot of money in doing this. That is really light. I think I want a little bit darker color in there. I just went and got my dominoes. Got my dominoes. They're fun. Yeah, mine are tiny yeah, though. Tiny. I like to make pendants out of them. Yeah, I've got some of the little ones too. They they come. Actually, you can get them in these packs like this that are real tiny. And mm -hmm. I, um, the bigger ones, I drill. I put them in my Dremel. And you can drill right through, like these, these I can string and actually do a bracelet or something out of, or, um, you know, hang, do it as a, a longer piece and hang dangles. Holly is asking about photo paper. Um, she's asking what kind to use. I'm not using photo paper. This is just I, I don't glasses. like photo paper. This is glossy cardstock, not photo paper. It has, it has emol emollients on it. Yeah. So I steer away from that. So my dominoes are even are tiny, tiny dominoes. Yes. I do like to use the stays on ink because it's made for non-porous surfaces. So if I wanted, uh, let's get that little butterfly that we had earlier. If I wanted to stamp on this now, I can stamp on a non-porous surface and get a nice image. And make several. I'm coming down this way because I fudged. <laughs> <laughs> or, well, here's the other thing. The nice thing about this is all I have to do is take some solution and wipe that right back and start over again. You know, until you seal these. Yeah. 
I don't think I have anything out that's small enough to stamp on my little domino. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure how. I probably have to rearrange my stays on, too. I like, I like all these little bitty. Like this one is just a real small little face, but you can use a portion of yeah, I'm going to try this butterfly stamp. Here's a script stamp, okay? And I can take that and just put that right over and put that into the background. Oh, yeah, my stays on pad is like bone dry. <laughs> oh, dear. It's okay, I have a re -anchor. You just have to let it settle in there a little bit. Fun little stamp, and it's got words. So I should do, do this down here. It's fine. Hello, Elaine. Another person has joined us. Any closer than this? Oh, yeah, here we go. There they are. A little fun things. And you can see on this one, I actually put um, a little bit of the gold. So you you can just keep playing with these. They become a lot of fun. <laughs> Here's a little swirly stamp. So, yeah, the, that's dominoes. Dominoes. I'm going to switch. used on the edging for these is um, a Krylon pen. Um, these come in different colors. You can get copper. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I just Looks got like we have I have a yeah. copper pen, actually, that I got at the... Um, Creativations. We have people still joining us, Shell. Um, yes. So I want to say hello to all those people that are coming in now. We've got, let's see, we've got Elaine, we've got uh, Laura. Oh, I guess Laura was here. Um, anyway, of course, I have gloves on and I'm not scrolling real well. But hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Oh my gosh. Idiot. Okay, and then the other thing that I discovered while I was playing last night. Now I have used to seal the dominoes before. I've used um, dimensional adhesive like crystal lacquer or um, the glossy accents. But um, one of the other things that I found yesterday is you can use a polymer gloss. And I thin this down a little bit. So let me show you how that works. What you got going there, Shell? Cut out some UPL paper and I'm doing the dripping technique where you just put drops and let it spread on its own. Okay. Still using these uh, pinata jacquard okay. brand. It's been a while since I've used UPO. Uh huh. I like the way it uh, blooms. Yeah, it's a fun product. Yeah. And then I have alcohol blending solution. I don't have the jacquard blending solution, so I'm just using the uh, ranger one okay which from what i hear from tim holt has resin in it yes so i didn't know not want to spray it is what he's saying you do not want to spray that mm -hmm. i have i have made sprays with my own um rubbing alcohol which works fine but oops, i guess i gotta take the Cut the cover off of this stuff. This is just a, a big bottle of a blitz, um, 
product, which is polymer gloss medium. And I'm going to put a little bit of that in my cup and I'm going to add a little bit of water. I can find a water bottle. I'm going to add a little bit of water and stir that up. Just thin it out a little bit. And I can just use my end of my paintbrush, get that mixed real well. And if you're if you're working on pieces, um, something that you can do is just take those little plastic cups. You know, take take your little plastic cup, and you can flip it over, and you can set your piece right on that plastic cup. So that if it drips down, it's not sticking to the paper. Just a little hint. This is fun. And then I just take a take a brush. And I can brush several coats of this on once it dries, but I just, you know, lightly brush over with the polymer gloss. And I'll set that aside to dry. And this has a coat. Uh, this one has a coat. Um, I put a coat on last night before uh, I set these aside. And so they're ready for a second coat. And, you know, you guys probably have some of this polymer around. <laughs> if you do any of the... Uh, mixed media stuff, you may already have some polymer, you know, pouring medium probably would work. Um, any of those polymers that are clear, I think are, are going to serve the purpose. So think about what you have. You know, I know many of you already have the, the glossy accents or some kind of um, crystal lacquer like this too. If you have resin that works, um, so there's a number of different products that are going to work besides those spray sealants. Oh, it's getting stinky in here. So they're talking about the kind of photo paper that they're using. Um, I know uh, Nina Rabina uses the back side of a photo paper a lot of times for hers. Um, I just I have enough of the other papers that I never went out and bought anything like that. Um, and we don't have any in our dollar store because she says she can find it in her dollar store. I don't find it in the dollar store. So anyway... So, so I have a couple different sizes of uh, straws, and I've noticed that different sizes give different effects. This bigger one will help me blow out, like kind of like um, flowers, whereas the smaller one makes more like little splats. It's making me kind of stoned to smell all this stinky stuff. So if I get weird, it's not my fault. Well, <laughs> and that's and that's, that's another that's point. Is point. Work, work in a ventilated space. space. This is a ventilated space, but it's still stinky. And I'm very sensitive to it. So Yeah. They, that's why the, okay, for those people that are real sensitive to the alcohol, um, they do have the cleanup solution from Pinata, and it works very similarly to the alcohol. So I would recommend that for people that are real sensitive to the alcohol. I think I need to open my window. Well, I'm gonna turn on the fan. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay. So has anybody got a, a 
request for a surface they want me to work on next. For the polymer medium, um, Marilyn, that is, sorry, I thought I showed it. Um, Shell, can you switch over a second? Yeah, I clicked it. There we go. <laughs> okay. I don't know why. It takes forever. <laughs> this is a polymer gloss um, from Dick Blick, but there are any number of them out on the market. Um, this is just a clear polymer gloss. And like I said, any any of those clear polymers are probably going to work for you. I but think like this I is also... for the for the spray ones. I like the Kamar varnish, and I also like the triple uh, thick one. One thing I worked on this morning while I was playing was I had some I had some um, paper clay like this. And I wanted to seal it. So the first thing I did is I got out my hairspray and I sprayed them before I put the um, alcohol ink on it. And you can see it accepted the alcohol ink. So you can layer things onto even paper clay, but you probably want some kind of coat of seal there before you go to the surface. So I hope that answers your question. I think this might be a polymer polymer sealer too. This uh, Liquitex is the one that I use often. This gloss medium and varnish. I've sealed stuff like that before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Like I said, everybody's everybody's got something in their line, so <laughs> you'll you'll find it. I'm really in love with this color, Cool Perry, from the Tim Holtz Ranger line. Mm -hmm. What a pretty color. Well, I don't see anybody saying they want me to work on anything specific, so I guess I'll just pick one. <laughs> yep, just play. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. Let's see. You've been showing them UPO, so I don't need to do that. Let's work on, let's work on this one. Um, what I have here is, this is just a, I like to tape my stuff down when I work. This is just a cheap sketch pad. And I use uh, washi tape to put it down with. And then um, I have... You don't have to have a palette like this. You can put it out in any kind of palette, but I have a palette like this. Yes, I was going to do that. With my alcohol. And I need another cup because I need to put a little alcohol in a cup. So I'm going to grab one of those. Oh, that's got flakes in it. Oh. <laughs> The palette that I have is uh, from Walmart, and it costs $1.99. Yeah? Yep. It's Lowell Cornell, and it's um, got my dried alcohol inks in it, and then I have a little list of which ones I put in there so that I can remember, and then it has all this room for blending. And I put my alcohol in a water brush. So I'm going to do that in a bit. We'll let Peg do hers first, and then I'll do mine. Laura, Laura's asking, is this just glossy medium? Yeah, basically. I mean, you've got something, Laura. I'm pretty sure you've got something in your stash. You know, try what you've got before you go out and buy something else. So I'm going to put, actually, I think I'm going to put a little blending solution, because that'll keep this wet a little bit longer. And I'm just going to show you. Now, when you when you paint with this stuff, it is going to move the white. You know, if I if I come in here and do my painting on here, sometimes it will move the white a little bit. You can see how it's it's um, 
removed it up here in this area a little bit, but that's okay because I can come back in with more white and I can continue to layer on top of here. And I think I need a little yellow. And I probably need to rinse that out. So you can see that you can work on a dark surface. And the translucent colors will come up as long as you've got that white in there. So now I can come back with a little bit of the white. And you can use other mixatives in there too. I mean, uh, you could add some silver and things in here or gold and um, that would be fun too. Make sure you shake your white because it is a mixative. And then, you know, as you put it out, add a few drops of the blending solution to it so that it, you know, stays wet because the mixatives tend to dry faster even than the alcohol ink. Just saying. So now I've got, now I've got my white with my dirty brush. <laughs> And I can come back and, and you can Cindy see Cindy wants you to do um, the tin foil. Okay. You got a suggestion. Uh -huh. I was reading that. Okay, cool. But you can see that the white picks up the yellow from underneath. And then I can still come back and add more of the, more of the yellow in here. I'm having fun with these marbled backgrounds. They are fun. I think I want to add a little bit. These always remind me of those cone flowers. Mm -hmm. I want to add a little bit of the purple in here. So anyway, you get the idea about uh, painting on here. Uh, remember also that alcohol ink works on any of these types of surfaces. So if I've got um, a heart like this, which is clear, I tend to buy all of my embellishments in clear because I can colorize them. Clear or white because we have all of this stuff that we can colorize with. So I can pick up my alcohol ink and I can just use that to colorize my piece with. And the same thing with my little rose here. It's going to accept that alcohol nicely. If you guys saw the piece that I had worked on the other day, um, it had, I'd done the eyes on this with a clear gem and I didn't want the clear gem. So I came back and I added alcohol coloration on top to, to give them a different look. Because the clear just didn't look right with my piece. Okay, so you want to see metal. What are you doing, Shell? I wanted to show this real quick. Okay. Because um, I might not have seen this before. I just used that same uh, thing in three different colors of the Adirondack inks 
on here and I splattered it with a little bit of 91% alcohol. I think it's pretty dry now. So it's a background on UPO. Then I have a large background stamp and I have some archival ink. This just happens to be watering can colored archival ink. Nice and juicy. Has to be archival ink, apparently, from what I've heard. Never tried it with anything else, but I'm just going to stamp that over the alcohol ink background. And this is on the UPO paper, and I want I was going to do a little demonstration of showing you what, what UPO paper versus glossy paper versus other paper will do. Maybe I'll do that in a bit. So once you've stamped your image on there, you can just blot it a little bit to get any excess. And this is just a shop towel. And then once you rub it, might not have waited long enough, but it will remove the alcohol background where you've stamped. So you end up getting a stamped lighter color image on there. I would recommend waiting a little bit longer to let it really react with the alcohol underneath. But of course, I'm doing this live and trying to get trying to show you all. So, why of course you are. So Nikki's leaving. Bye, Nikki. Aluminum foil, you betcha, baby. I got aluminum foil, and you know, like I I said, I got I got the two different pieces. Um, I have the one that I had put onto a piece of paper with the double stick, which is just the cheap dollar store aluminum foil. And I have a piece of roll aluminum that you get at the craft store. So I don't know. I don't know where we are because it doesn't, doesn't look like it's catching up to me, but whatever. So I'm just going to start applying some inks. I'm going to drop them on here and hope for the best. So uh, I'm going to start with some mushroom because I think that's a cool color. Especially on this. I, I think this looks kind of outer spacey. And I also want to use some oregano. This <laughs> Oops, and let's get a little bit of the pinata. This looks like a burl brown. And I'm just right now I'm just dropping it on here. I'd like the color to be a little bit intense. So Let's shoot it with a little bit of air and see what happens. Oh, yeah. I'm liking that. That'd be cool. You know, I tried doing it with the straw, like they always recommend. Just blow with a straw. Yeah, no. <laughs> I really get lightheaded doing that. So um, I get my little canned air. Now, it will get cold uh, when you've used it for a while. And I do it, you know, you have to squeeze it gently because if you're not judicious with the air coming out, um, <laughs> it, it can really go wild. Let me show you what happens when you go wild. Let me just squeeze it and show you what happens, okay? It just really goes everywhere. So I just, you know, gently, gently does it. And, you know, you can pick and choose which areas of this you like the best. You don't have to use the whole piece. I just, I, I enjoy playing and creating this stuff. So, you know, make a, make a pile, make a mess. <laughs> Get some really cool stuff going here. Oh, thanks. 
Yeah, thanks, guys. They're all they're all being very polite and saying nice things. Well, that's nice of them. Yeah, these are these are awesome colors. I'm digging them. But you know me. <laughs> I like my browns and my blacks and my slates and my, you know, oregano. Yeah, my color tones on those would be completely different from yours. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cindy would like you to drop the white ink in there to show what it looks like in the middle of all your cool browns. Well, how about we use a metallic instead of the white? If you want. I think I'm, I'm just telling you what she said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can put white on there. She doesn't want to. She wants metallic, Cindy. White is going, okay, I'll tell you right away. White is going to change it entirely to something that I don't like, but I'll show you what it looks like. Um, just for you. Just for you. Just my friend. Okay, so here's here's white. And I put a good gob on there. And I'm going to blow it. And it kind of turns to mud. Pretty mud. Yeah. <laughs> Let me get, let me get a gold and we'll put a gold in there because this is metallic. You know, the white actually even tones down the metallic on here. Um, so let me put a couple drops of the gold. I'll put some even on the white and see if I can brighten that up again. So, you guys see that? You see the difference? This is where the white is pure. This is where the gold is. And the white is not going to have the reflective quality of a metallic. But, you know, it's cool anyway. You know, it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't necessarily have to have that. I can think of applications where you would want that. Honestly, I can. So this is a colored, you know, it's all, it, you can use either side of this. But let's do, let's do some other colors on here. Let me grab some, ooh, eggplant. <laughs> Let me grab some eggplant. Another I'm okay color. with it. Yeah, that's a, a shade of purple, right? Yes. We'll do some eggplant and some, what is this one? It looks like sailboat. And I want a little bit of slate. Okay, so now I want to drop some blending solution on that. Just a little bit because it keeps it, it keeps it moist, you know, it keeps it so you have a flow. And then this one, I'm just going to use my tool and move that around. This would be cool, you know, like with some undersea stuff. Undersea stuff. Okay, so let me show you a comparison between the two, maybe I back out a little bit.
There we go. So, metallic. You guys have any questions about metallic? Oh, this is, okay. <laughs> With my bare hand, no, that one's still wet. I can see that it's still wet. What will take a long time to dry is this white. But if you go over here, it's not bad. And here's the thing. You can dry this with a heat tool. Just don't use your heavy-duty heat tool. Use, use your distance away because you don't want to set anything on fire. So I can, you know, heat set this. And I also have a... Um, I also have a hair dryer that has a cool setting. Those things work real well if you're going to, you know, work on something like this. Um, oh, is Letty still having trouble? That's too bad. I'm trying to. Oil? Well, um, this one I created. Um, this is cheap aluminum foil from the dollar store, you know. And what I did is I took a double stick tape and just stuck it down on um, cardstock. And then I ran that through with an embossing folder. Um, like so, ran it through my uh, machine with an embossing folder so that I got the texture on there. And then this type of foil you can buy at the craft store. It comes in a roll and you can get it in different colors. Um, this one comes in a nice big roll like this. Okay. And you can get it um, here. Here's some that have the label still on them. Okay, so this is from uh, Amico. It's called Art Emboss. You can cut it with scissors. Um, I've got black. I've got blue. I've got teal. I've got gold. I mean, you can get it in a whole multitude of colors. And they come, I got these in a nine and a quarter inch by 12 inch, which is 237.5 millimeters by 305 millimeters. Um, and it's a fairly thick... I use this like if I'm going to emboss um, with an embossing tool or because it's thicker than your aluminum foil. So that's that's the purpose I like it for mostly. But I just pulled some out this morning because I'd made the one with the aluminum foil and then I thought I'd use a colored one, right? Why not? Okay. I hope that helps you, Holly. If you have it sealed. Okay, I'm not sure what they're questioning. Yeah, spray adhesive would work. You can spray something and, and stick it down. The main thing is I just, because this, Aluminum foil is too thin. You know, you might even try a heavy-duty aluminum foil and run it through the embossing. Um, I, because this is real cheap aluminum foil and it's going to tear, I put a double stick down. And that's that's why it worked the way it did was because um, I needed something a little bit thicker to run through the embossing machine.
What you doing, Shell? Dream, dreamscaping. Okay, cool. So what I have here is a piece of UPO paper. And then I have my dried alcohol ink palette. <clears throat> and a water brush that has 91% isopropyl alcohol inside. And all I'm doing is just picking up the color. If I need to blend the color, I can blend it on this plastic. And then just adding it, making kind of a landscape here. Making some little trees, little happy trees. So I can just pick up the color using the brush, which has, you know, it's wet with alcohol on it. And then just pat it on. And of course, because it's UPO paper, it's blooming. So you get a very different look than if you would on regular paper. But it's fun. And you can keep adding to it just like you would with any other type of art. If it blooms out too much for you, you can go back in and add some more detail until you're happy with it. So you're happy with your happy little trees. And it's basically like it's basically watercolor. <laughs> Only with alcohol ink. Probably the closest and thing you can think that, of. that you're using alcohol ink, you know? Yeah. So the effect is different, but kind of the same. And when you want to refill your palette, the alcohol ink dries really quickly. So as long as you know which color you put it in there, you can just put the same one back in. So I can make a crazy sunshine in the sky if I want. And always, if you don't like something, you can just use some alcohol to get rid of it. Maybe I didn't want that white after all, maybe, or yellow after all. Maybe I just wanted it white. It's pretty fun. It is fun. Yeah, and it, then of course, once this is dry, I can go back in with pins and, you know, with a micron or something and dry in details. One of the things that I find that's fun with um, doing what you're doing, Shell, mm -hmm. is um, the, the way that you can keep on layering and keep on layering. And, you know, if you don't like what, you, what you've got there, you can just, you know, add another layer and just run it right off the edge of the paper <laughs> it's cool it's really yeah. cool you can even just if you get really tired of it you can just wipe the whole thing off and start yeah. over yeah but the the one of the other fun techniques is to um you know do the drop thing and doodle on top of it you yeah know? that's what i was going to do with some of these ones that i made earlier Planning on doodling over them. Yeah, they're fun. Let's see if there's any questions. Looks like some people need a sandwich, so they will watch later. Ah, yeah. Hi, Patty. Hi, Holly. I'm not sure I said hi to her. Did I ever say hi to Ewa? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how long Patty's been here. Hi, I think Patty. Got here. I think. Fran is just getting here. Hi, Fran. So yeah, even even the um, Painting, you know, even if I'm doing a painting like this with the inks on a darker color, you can come back in then, you know, use your Posca pens or something like Posca because <laughs> 
we all love our Pasca pins, don't we? Oh, I certainly do. Yeah. Would not be the same if I didn't use Pasca. So, you know, think about think about doodling on top of this now that you've got your basis down. Yep, I'm planning on doing that here in a bit. But you can see you can get pretty good results painting on here. Just using your brush and your alcohol inks and blending. Yep, I'm wondering what this white would be like on the top of my mountains, on my little dreamscape mountains. Oh, like perfect. There'd be snow. You got snow there. I've never had a white ink before in uh, alcohol ink, so I'm going to try it out. I, I like it. I like the white ink a lot. You see how it, you know, you get your highlights and everything with it. Hmm. Okay, what's everybody saying? I don't know. Patty's saying, what are you doing? We're doing alcohol ink, Patty. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? I don't know what you doing. <laughs> uh, should have done some I should have done some dimensional flowers to put on this piece. Where's my Upo? Not my Upo, my where's my tie back? I haven't played with tie back yet. I don't know where your stuff is. <laughs> did you hide it from me? Did you I go did away not. and hide it from me? I've never been to your house. Actually, I think this would be cool with, I wonder if I, okay. Total experimentation now. That white alcohol ink, right? I'm thinking, why can't I stamp with it? <laughs> you know, I think you probably could. You know how I am. Why can't I stamp with it? I think I'll try that. Oh, I got to get a better brush. Try a foam brush. No, it'll soak up too much of the product. Oh, that's true. I just need a, I just need a nice thin brush. And some more white. Because I need it to stand out on my black, right? Seems logistic like a logical assumption right there yeah so i'm gonna put a little of that on here let's see what we get this is play time i'm not worried about messing it up i'm just wanting to get something that i haven't done before right Oh yeah. It working? Uh-huh. It is. Gotta like that when it works. And I would say, you know, you gotta clean this stuff off of your stamp pretty quickly. Yeah, you wouldn't want to leave that on there. Yeah. But it's like I'm liking it. Woohoo. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna clean that off with my stamp. But can you guys see this? Can you guys see the 
that it actually did the little bit of script there in the background. I like it. I'm pretty happy with my little dreamscape. Cool. Let me see. Let me see. Um, <laughs> make it go up close. Yeah. No, Sybil, that is that is white um, mixative. I use the white mixative. My brush is out of alcohol. Thanks, Pat. Yeah, I, you know, it was all about the alcohol ink today, so I thought, you know, I wanted to... You can, you know, especially now, I could come in, say, with a, a white... Posca, and I can, you know, do some highlighting and things on here. But what I wanted to do was to stick with the alcohol ink since that's what we were concentrating on today. So this whole thing has nothing but alcohol ink and alcohol ink mixative on here. Okay. Which that kind of impresses me. I'm, I'm shocking myself. <laughs> so when I was messing with my domino, I stamped and stays on, and I, ugh, the way too wet. I wanted to clear out some of the alcohol ink where my little butterfly is. So I can, I'm just taking my little uh, brush that I was using for, the dreamscaping and just kind of lifting to make the butterfly stand out more. No, it's not really focusing, is it? But it's so tiny, it's hard to see. But I can make that into a little pendant, and this is just a mini domino. <laughs> Patty's cracking me up. I'll send you my address, <laughs> ladies. <laughs> okay, Patty, you just do that. <laughs> hmm. Is it time for doodling? Yeah, sure. Might be time for doodling. doodling. Might as well. I wonder. Oh, yeah, that works. Got kind of quiet. <clears throat> so this is one of my um, really dark things that I did on glossy paper earlier when we were playing at the very beginning. And I'm taking my alcohol water brush, water tank brush with alcohol, and just uh, <clears throat> making some doodles on there. I don't know if you can see them. And it's kind of lifting up the color. And then I'm going to go back in with my pen and I'm going to doodle over that. Cool. In a second. It takes it. It doesn't like instantly lift it. But it does do it eventually. 
hold a drawing for a piece of our artwork. Patty, you didn't want me to just send that to you then, huh? <laughs> <laughs> They're funny. <laughs> this is pretty fun. Doodling can be a lot of fun. Yep. But I just had another idea. Yeah, what's that? I'm going to get an artist sponge uh, of some sort. And I'm going to dunk it in alcohol, 91%. Yeah. And then I'm going to use a stencil. What do you think? Will it work? Well, give her a try. We'll find out, right? Yep. <laughs> That's all you can do. That's why it's called art play. Don't want it to be too wet. It might be too wet. I don't know. I do have some new stencils I can show you guys. I can find that thing. You know, I had I had done some alcohol ink. Oh yes, yeah. that totally worked. Cool. Look. And I I put the paper aside. I have no idea where it is. So consequently, you guys aren't seeing that today. <laughs> Where's my? I didn't button? mention I was gassed last night, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, my God. Of course, this alcohol is going to eat the sponge. So if it's a sponge that you want to keep for the rest of your life, I would not recommend this. Let's see if I can find another really dark one. That one. Let's try it with that one. And a different. These stencils are from Wonder Strumpet. Sarah Trump is her name, and I've known her for a long, long time. And I just found out that she has stencils. Who knew? Well, now you know. Yeah. <laughs> so let's try one of hers. Okay. This one is a key background. Just a bunch of keys. Whoops. Not quite as dramatic. I was trying not to get it too soaking wet. I just wet. lost the stream. Are you still seeing it? Of uh, what? I just lost the stream, the video stream. Are you still seeing it? No, I, um, I see us. Okay. Are you saying on YouTube? Because on I don't YouTube. get it on YouTube. On YouTube. Does it still say live? Somebody said, yeah, it still says live, and it's and somebody just saw the key background, one that I just did. So, so your thing says it's not on. Yeah, I'm going to go back in. I can see you now. You can see it now? Yeah, it just must have been my iPad, as usual. Maybe your husband's doing it again. No, he just went outdoors. Oh. <laughs> Quit being a brat. <laughs> <laughs> he just went outdoors. He couldn't possibly. Huh. I would say that. 
that wasn't as successful. Maybe because my sponge is probably kind of dirty now. Ooh, successful on there. Holy jeez. Sometimes the cleanup is cooler than the thing you made. <laughs> I'm liking my underpaper. Poor stencil. Yeah, I lost the chat. You've lost everything? Well, I lost everything, and then I went back in, and then the chat's not there. It's like YouTube is messing around. <laughs> Always messing around. Messing yeah. around. Don't be messing with me. Yeah. All we can do is say thanks for being free. Yep. Um, Sybil says that her stream is dropping also, and she has to keep going out and back in. Yeah, what's up? The underpaper turned out really cool. <laughs> now I need a new piece. <laughs> oh, what was it? I got some notification. Oh, you know what? I know what part of my problem is. I got a notice from my uh, service provider saying that they were going to be dinking around doing something today. Oh. Those jerks. Yeah. It's like, hello, I pay for service. What do you mean you're going to be doing something today? Don't they know I'm live? <laughs> they probably just don't care. You think? So, are you starting another project or should we just? I'm just trying to wrap things up. Um, I, I was trying to finish some projects to make it look like I actually accomplished something today. <laughs> what, are, what are we at? Almost 10, so 8.30 to 10, that would be end of show, I guess, huh? Yeah. 10 o'clock. So My think, time I'm talking about, not your time. I guess we can just show them what we got. Can you see the chat? Yeah. Elaine just said, so inconsiderate discussing your uh, bratty service providers. Exactly. My sentiments exactly. Huh. My um, PBO pin works out really well on here. I never got to the Posca pins. I guess we could do alcohol inks for days. Okay, I'm switching over to my phone because my tablet is not helping anything. Okay. Are we showing off what we did then and we're done? Oh, you know what I never showed was the sprays I made. Ah. Oh, well. <laughs> I can show the samples, but I can't. Uh, I'll do that. Okay. So earlier today, I made some sprays in little bottles using the um, alcohol inks and uh, diluting it with the 91% alcohol. And then as I was going along, I sprayed some glossy cardstock with the different colors. That's not one of them. Just through stencils, just, you know, and then I sprayed the labels and wrote, wrote on them and sprayed the labels. And I still have two more bottles of just alcohol that I haven't put any color in yet. But those were ones that I made this morning before the stream started. So those are alcohol ink sprays because I didn't have any own any of those. And then the ones that I used, the... Uh, padding technique. There's the one with the, the keys. They're starting to show up now. And this is the one with the other stencil. These are the one, and this is the one, this is one of the ones where I use the um, archival ink. 
And I was just starting to use the PBO on there. And then these were the two, the one on gold and the one on white with um, some of these pinata inks and the ink applicator tool. I've got pieces of felt everywhere. Then I started to do dropping techniques like this one and this one. That's just dropping the ink on UPO paper. This one is really weird and shiny. And that's uh, that's these pinata jacardines. And this one isn't the same. It's not as shiny. I think that the jacardines have a shiny finish because that's dry, but it looks wet. Yeah, I honestly think that's true that um, they do have a little bit more of a gloss finish than the others. Yes. And then these were the, a couple of them that I, re, I used the archival ink and removed the pattern on UPO paper. And then this last one is painting with dried alcohol ink using my little brush. And alcohol. Oh, and then I made a little teeny tiny domino with a butterfly, which I will probably color somehow. So that's me for today. Cool. What did you make? Well, you know, I was playing with a number of things. Um, I have my dominoes and let's see if I can get this in the screen here. I have my dominoes. I have my um, metallics pieces. I have my little pieces that I colorized. And I made a couple of cards out of the pieces that I created. So that's it. Awesome. I do need to, I do need to take the Krylon, you know, finish these out with the Krylon around the edge here. But I think they turned out pretty cool. I like them. I like them little butterflies and thunder. Awesome. So we're done. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. They're saying that they're pretty and that they're awesome and uh, fabulous and beautiful. <laughs> And that they have lots of things to try and that they yes. love them. So has anybody got any questions about uh, products or things that we use today or, you know, just in general that uh, maybe we can help you out with? Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks, Sue. <laughs> Patty says it's drawing time. Drawing time? Is she, yeah, is she drawing she, while she's watching us? No, you she wants us to give her something. She wants somebody to oh, win. She wants to watch you draw. Okay. She wants a drawing as in a winner. Oh, draw, 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 draw. Well, um, I mean, that if, if there was a way to do that, but I don't know how to do it out of the live chat without a moderator to do it. So I don't know. I don't know how. To do that and pick a number maybe can we do a pick a number um and then everybody says their number do we know how many people are in here a number between one and 100 yeah okay i'll think of a number and then they can all say their number and you can look and see what their numbers were and okay. i'll reveal it i'm going to write it down on a piece of paper a number between 1 and 100. When you get it written down. Um, okay, I've written it down. No one can see. All right. One, a number between 1 and 100, guys. Go. Um, Lori says 63. Yeah, we're... We're going to give them a few minutes here to everybody get a number. 
gets gets you a number. <laughs> Don't be left out in the cold. So are you writing down the numbers? Oh or no. Just gonna, I'll just scroll, scroll back. back. Okay. Yeah. Has everybody got a number? I hope, I hope. <laughs> They're making numbers. I don't know. If everyone has, I'm not um, sure. How many people I'm going to count down from 15. Get your number now. One, or from 15, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 5, 4, Three, come on, Holly, get a number. Two, there she goes. <laughs> One, okay, and the number is? Number is, let me put it over online. 62. Okay, Lori's 63. Does everybody think Lori's the closest? 77. 80, 99, 57. I think is the closest from what I can Laura, see. I think you're the winner, winner, chicken dinner. You just need to send us your address. You can private message either here or on Messenger. And uh, we'll get something out to you. Lori Richard is the winner. Yay! Yay. <laughs> All right, cool. Okay, that's it for us, guys. Um, thanks, everyone, for attending. And if you're watching in the replay, please remember to give us a thumbs up and uh, leave us a comment, share if you want to, all those things so that our channel can grow. And um, even if you are here right now, please don't forget the thumbs up, guys. Okay? If you liked it. If you hated it, don't bother. But if you liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Too All funny. right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. See you next time.